Okay, so we'll continue our little talk about forces on planar surfaces and just a little bit of a review, a review. If we had a body of liquid and we said that liquid remained constant and say we had a gate or some surface down here and we're looking at it, you know, cross-sectionally, um, if that's a word, we're actually looking at it, this area is actually this area. And we said in the last video that this would be the centroid of this object under the body of, in this case, maybe water. And we denoted this, the x-axis, this, the y-axis, and the z is actually going into the board, right? So maybe this will give you some sort of uh, perspective. And we said, well, this, since this plate is submerged in water, we have a pressure distribution um, resulting from the water. And it looks something like this, in this case. And we said, instead of finding the center of pressure and putting just one force there, we can actually look at the gate. So here's the gate, or the, you know, surface. And say, okay, well, this pressure distribution does give a resultant center of pressure, and it's somewhere over here. But instead of that, let's just say we can look at the centroid of this surface and replace this pressure distribution by force P and a couple at the centroid of this um, surface. And we said we found two formulas, or we were given two formulas. The first was FP, the force resulting from this pressure distribution acting at the centroid of this gate, which is the pressure acting at the centroid of the gate times the cross-sectional area, which is this area. And we said this couple acting at the centroid of this submerged surface resulting from this pressure distribution is the specific weight of the fluid that's touching the surface, in this case it would be water, times the second um, area moment, or inertia, around the x-axis, right, because the moment is acting, or the couple is acting like this, uh, times cosine beta. And beta, we said, if this was like this, we said beta was that angle uh, right there. Now, in statics, we learned that we could re we can replace the force and the couple by just a resultant force, and that would be the pressure. Um, that would be the center of pressure of this pressure distribution, this green pressure distribution. And um, let me actually just redraw the gate really quick, or, or this uh, surface. The surface is like this, right? And we have the centroid here. Now, we said we can put a pressure force here and a couple here. But remember, if we, if we said, hey, well, this pressure distribution also gives a center of pressure maybe somewhere here. And in order to replace this force and couple, we would have to put equal um, and equivalent forces on our system to cancel out this force and this couple. So if we said, okay, well, if it's acting there, we can replace another force here and say this force and this force down here are equal. And if that's equal, you see that it's creating a, a moment this way, right? This force is going straight down. This force is going straight up. The moment that's resulting is this. And in order um, to cancel out this couple, this moment would obviously have to be going the other way. And we would have to know uh, this distance, and we'll call that distance nu, 
um, and we can res we can we can substitute not substitute we can you know get rid of this couple or this CP and this force by just one center of force and that force we can say that um, the new couple that's created by this force and this force, we'll call that couple new, is equal to new times the force acting at the centroid of the object um, resulting from the pressure. Now, if we solve this for new, we'll say that, okay, well, new is equal to the couple new over the force um, acting at the centroid of the object by the force distribution or the pressure distribution and let maybe if we clean this up it'll it'll make a lot more sense we can say okay well this new force which is the resultant force from this green pressure distribution it's acting at a certain distance from the centroid of this submerged surface and we call that new, that distance new. And that's the distance where if we were to replace this force and couple by an equivalent force only, um, and remember from statics you have to, if you if you add an equivalent force here, if you said, hey, I want to cancel this force P out and this couple P, you'll say, okay, well, I'll add this force P here where um, if we added it far enough, if we added it a certain distance from the centroid, it'll actually create a, a moment that um, cancels out this CP, right? And if you were to add this force right here, well, you would have to add this force right here because this force and this force would equal zero. But if you added this force, you could cancel out this FP and this FP and this um, couple that was created by the pressure distribution. And the result is just, just one resultant force of this green uh, pressure distribution. Okay, And what we call this distance right here, this point right here we call the center of pressure. And, oops, you can't see that. The center of pressure is this point right there. And in all honesty, when we're, when we're um, trying to find, maybe let's say this was a gate under a sub, uh, body of water, and it had a hinge here, and maybe it had like a, a stopper here, and you wanted to find the reaction forces at this stopper. In all honesty, coming from this step into this step is is well it's it's a bit of a waste of time because you already have the formulas to find the force acting at the centroid of the gate and the couple acting at the centroid of this gate you have these two two formulas and you can use these two formulas um, to find you know the the reaction force at this stop or you can use it to find the reaction forces at this hinge this hinge right here and and um, yeah, you could do this. You could say, okay, instead of this force and couple, I want to replace that force and couple by just one equivalent force, which is this. And you could do that, but in all honesty, you can, coming from this step to this step is just extra work, extra work. It's stuff that you don't really need to, unless, you know, the problem says, hey, you know, find the center of pressure, and you would, you know, draw your free body diagram, find the force and the couple, and then, you know, from there on use this formula to figure out where um, this resultant force would be. And this this couple right here, the couple new, is actually the same as the couple P, which is, you know, this. And so you can say if you have CP, you have FP, you can say Okay, the couple over that force will give me the distance from the centroid of this gate to where the resultant force is. And if you know that, you can just 
find that and you're done with the um, center of pressure.